three, two, one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe this is the second episode uh, of 2024 in the very first installment of a series that I'm titling No Foreplay. These are going to be very short, uh, very to the point podcasts where we take a, a topic and we just beat it down to the ground. Uh, in about 10 minutes. That's the goal. These are supposed to be short. These are supposed to be quickies if you uh, <laughs> catch my drift. But I, I can't, I can't, I cannot go quick on this one, right? At least this introduction, because dude, you had a little bit of a life changing event. Yeah. I should introduce you. This is Jeremy Dinsmore. He is the host of the Antler Up uh, podcast here on the Sportsman's Empire. And he does an excellent job. So if, if you are looking for really, really good content to go more podcasts, to go listen to definitely go check out Jeremy's on the antler up uh, podcast. But um, Jeremy, thank you for making time to do this today, but also congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So anybody that is followed along or have, has been listening to anything I've done recently. I did one with Ricky over on, um, uh, uh, with the range podcast. We, we did a sh shiny new object, uh, piece. And I talked about some weightlifting equipment, my bow, obviously I said, because my new shiny object is not here yet at the time of recording, but at the time of recording here, we are just shy of 48 hours. My wife and I being home with a newborn, uh, little Carly may, so another girl, so girl dad, which is uh, man, it's okay by me, but yeah, yeah, so it's it's a it's been a journey so far to the last forty eight hours. Yeah, you sent me a picture, and I'll say, dude, she's adorable. Oh, thanks, she's adorable, uh, and so I'm very happy for you and your wife. Uh, tell your wife thank you for uh, giving you time with a newborn upstairs to go ahead and uh, and and do this real quick. So we're gonna knock this out of the park, and um. Here's what I want to talk about. This is what is on my mind going into 2024. Okay. okay. This is this is what I've been thinking about. This is what I've been talking a lot about with other people, uh, not just on the podcast, but you know, phone calls that I, you know, I, I talk with hundreds of hunters every month. And uh, this is what's uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to knock this out between that 10 to 15 minute mark. And the topic for today is rules and regulations okay. okay and and to kind of caveat away from that but still in the same realm uh wild game violations uh and, and charges and, and what you think about that okay yep so we're gonna kick it off and uh let's see here 907 we're gonna start right now and my first question to you is are you happy with the rules and regulations of the state that you live in so obviously coming from the state of Pennsylvania, Dan, there are things that I don't mind. And then there are things that I just, I beat my head up against the wall with. And I'll mm -hmm. tell you what, Dan, to kind of even be more blunt about everything. I'm not one of those gigantic, man, I, I need, I need being a host of a podcast, and especially mm -hmm. in the outdoors. I do need to probably do a little better job with diving in deeper, or truly understanding and, and kind of doing that, which is kind of cool because I plan on doing that here in the future. A former student of mine is now a game warden here in the state of Pennsylvania, which is pretty cool and awesome. Awesome. Awesome student was a great athlete, but long story short, man, the one that, that obviously for me personally because being a teacher is yes we get three sundays to hunt one two of them being during deer season one of them being a a deer or i'm sorry a bear on a sunday during the month of november but man i i would love something a little bit more opportunities and i get certain the tradition and the fight for for that but for me personally man, this is my lifestyle. I love hunting and, you know, obviously it's family, my work and, and number one, but then it's not far behind that. And this is what I love to do. It's my passion. It's my drive. And man, to be out in the woods and not have to take, uh, more sick days, personal days, whatever it is during the school week, uh, it would, it would be nice because I don't know how many years over the last decade, Dan, that Saturdays have been absolute miserable no deer movement, but man, Sundays were the best days of deer movement or just yeah. the time to be out in the woods. So that yeah. is probably the number one for me personally, that uh, just because it impacts me a little bit more. Yeah. So this has been a, a topic of conversation for like decades, 
uh, mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. And so my question back to you then is, what is this all about? Is this about religion or is this about giving the deer or wildlife a break for one day out of the week? What is the, what is the reason why Pennsylvania does not have full Sunday hunting? Oh man, I, I truly don't know that exact answer, but from the more, the more answers I think that I've heard out of everything, out of anything regarding this issue is the kind of farm bureau, bureau and mm -hmm. kind of the, along those lines. And it's just always been, it's that Sunday of rest type of ordeal. Uh, mm -hmm. Those two have been always our, the top of the, the list of what I've heard again, um, like I said, Dan, I, 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 unfortunately it's just, it's like one of those things for me. It's like, I, it's out of my control and I know uh, the backcountry hunters and anglers uh, BHA here in Pennsylvania did a lot of good things for that at the Sunday hunting organization here in Pennsylvania did a lot of things. So, uh, you know, you kind of do your best to support that and kind of be, be a little bit in a no, but, uh, I mean, it made its way into three, like I said, but at the same time, I wish there would be more opportunities. Heck, even if it started that, week prior you know that first sunday of of november november would be perfect you know you get two sundays back to back uh it just would it would help out i think a lot of you know hard working people and put more people in in the uh, in the woods and not necessarily say that's a bad thing but mm -hmm. i think you know it discouraged a lot of people that don't have the time anymore and having a saturday sunday warrior is better than just a saturday warrior Right. And I would think as a Department of Natural Resources, you want more people to buy tags and licenses. And I'm sure that there are people out there who do not have the ability to hunt throughout the week just because of their jobs. And so they look at this and they go, OK, well, I can only hunt Saturdays. Mm -hmm. I can only hunt during the weekends. Well, there's only then, you know, if you can't take any time off during the week, that's like one saturday hunt for the entire rut if something you know depending on where that saturday lands in the calendar year right then you can go the next week and it's a rifle season uh and then maybe you already you can only hunt that two-day window one time throughout the your entire hunting season it just seems a, uh, a little bit ridiculous to me when there's no real black or white answer to right. why this now I'm going to, I'm going to hog the microphone for a second. And I'm going to say that if this was in Iowa, here's what I would do. Okay. I would rally as many hunters as humanly possible, whether uh, does, does Pennsylvania have like a, a Pennsylvania bow hunters association or any type of uh, associations like that, that have big voices in, yeah. in the oh, state. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're absolutely just like I mentioned earlier, like the backcountry hunters and anglers group is a big one here. Uh, I know I do know there is a bow hunters PA group as well, and then like I said, the no Sunday uh, like hunt, uh, Sunday hunting or organization that's a big one. Like they've been really pro uh, big proponents of it and and doing things. I think teaming up with BHA the chapter here as well. So I mean the voices they're 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 taking it up there. It's just a matter of you know <laughs> finally something happening. Because I look at it like this, and, and I'm, I, I feel blessed to be where I'm at and to have the rules and regulations that I have in the state of Iowa. And so when I when I feel like as as a hunting community and as uh, a Department of Natural Resources, you should not be restricting any type of access to getting people out in the woods. Right. Right. And depending on who you talk to you know, hunting is in a decline or whatever. So why are you continuing, continuously restricting access to something that is in a decline? If you in fact want to, I mean, even financially want to make money from it because hunting means gas, means more, you know, equipment, gear and equipment. It means uh, food, right? Right, all, all, right? The economy is just can, like, it's just another click on the volume button of how you, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Stimulate the economy in, right. in, 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 a, in a way. And so I would say gather the troops and be very loud in expressing your opinion on this particular, this particular instance. So I, I really hope because it feels like they've made ground slowly over the last 10 years, right. but it might be worth getting loud again and just being like, hey, listen, man, 
this just seems ridiculous at this yeah. point, right? And maybe there are people out there who are more religious than me who have a uh, an opinion, and that opinion is, hey, listen, I, I feel that we should r- truly honor the uh the the day of the lord and have that day off or i truly think and this this is more of a department of natural resources um conversation do the does the wildlife in fact need a day off off. right okay like answer those questions for me right but then at the end of the day we are a nation that has its church and its state separated Mm-hmm. right and so all the all the uh decisions should be made at the state level not a religious level um I, you know take take that wherever you want to take it but i feel like this is you know this is a democracy and if it comes to a vote we need to vote we need to get it to be a vote and then we need to rally all the troops to vote yes for sunday hunting right yeah and what's crazy about the sunday hunting thing i mean there's there's only a few states that still do not allow it i mean delaware i know for sure just because i've hunted delaware in the last like three years maine is another one uh, massachusetts is is up there and i think there's uh, three states allow it on private uh mm-hmm. like only and that is I, I think down south like south carolina north carolina i think virginia as well so like again odd things like even maryland maryland was the first state for me this year that i hunted and part of the state you can hunt on sunday and then the other part you can not and uh, that's public i'm talking mainly on private there you can in certain aspects as well so it's it's so wonky and then that's why again like you really do need especially if you're going out of state i know we're talking about my home state yeah. here and you were talking about iowa man it is you really sometimes have to dive in deep uh, and, and make sure you are a hundred percent legal on, yeah. on what you're doing I'll tell you this, man, my dumb ass wouldn't, would do that. I'd travel all the way to Pennsylvania and say, Hey, listen, I'm going to hunt this long four day weekend and then, uh, show up and just be like, why is nobody in the woods yeah. today? And then it would click and I'd be like, Oh boy, <laughs> you know, like, right. right. I, I can't hunt Sunday. So, uh, yeah. Um, we have time for one last really quick, um, uh, topic here. Yep. And that is. From a rules and regulation standpoint, let's talk about peg allocations. Let's talk about, you know, antler. Rest- I know Pennsylvania has some antler restrictions in certain areas. Are you happy with Pennsylvania's overall rules and regulations? Yeah, with the antler restriction type stuff, 100%. Uh, I, from growing up as a kid, I'd love to see what I've what you're capable of actually like, quote unquote chasing the hunt now. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, there were times where, uh, I mean, my dad, you look back at some of those old photos and I remember being a four-year-old or a five-year-old kid looking back and, and seeing these old photos of me with my dad and his buck and it's you know, like a little forker, you know what I mean? And he's all proud, which is still great. I, I mean, there's, I'm not knocking that, but from where the state has grown into, man, it, you look at that and you're like, that's a Pennsylvania deer? No way. I mean, yeah. Nate Sellers, uh, average Jack archery, the buck that he killed this year, I mean, it, that was on, on public land. It was awesome. And I don't care where you hunt, public land, private land, it don't matter to me. But at the same time, just to know that's where that deer came from. I mean, Dan, mm-hmm. I'm not a big dude, but his rack fits in between my, my waist. I mean, that's pretty wow. impressive for, for where, where, uh, where he sh- had that opportunity to kill that buck. And man, I, as far as that goes, I am all for it. And I mean, like I said, for the most part, they do a good job. I know people disagree, but at the same time, I mean, you follow the rules, you do what you're supposed to do. I mean, the antler restriction stuff has done, I think, wonders for our, our deer herd uh, for sure. Yeah. And then are you happy with the amount of bucks that you can take in a certain year? I wish there would be some sort, like New York does it. I love new, the New York rules. You get that uh, buck during archery season and you get one during gun season. Now, I not... I think that selfish part for me would be like, man, I would love that opportunity. You know what I mean? And and mm-hmm. especially now knowing that I have a newborn here, I maybe will be stretching it. And the good news is some of these other states that I hunt are right next door ne- uh, as far as the uh, state goes. But man, it would be really cool to say, hey, like you have an opportunity to go hunt here, fill a, a, a uh, archery only tag because I mean, 
where I've hunted a lot this past year in public, I didn't see a lot of people. And then I would kind of go back and venture that way during gun season just to see. And it was 10 plus cars parked at that parking lot when there wasn't one all October, maybe a trickle here and there in early November towards the rut during bow season, but then it just explodes during gun season. So maybe w would it sell more hunting licenses too? I, I don't know. Like it, it, it would be interesting to see what would come out of that, but it, I, I, I doubt I'll ever see that in my lifetime. Yeah. Do you feel that the, the pressure, maybe, uh, maybe tag allocation and the pressure from hunting weekends because you know of the the sunday law do you think that uh, is one of the problems you hear about you know like hunters in pennsylvania they talk about high pressured public land do you mm -hmm. think the fact that that there's certain weekends where only saturday hunting is allowed adds to the pressure of the state in total yeah i think so i really yeah. do I, yeah. I really do. I mean, because the the thing that for me, where I live, I have to drive 35 minutes across over a mountain to my school where I go to work, and I cross multiple game lands. And I mean, it's funny. I mean, you'd be like, yep, no one's there today. And then there's a day where it's like, man, I wish I was in the woods, and I would see one truck there. I'm like, okay, maybe they're gonna have a good day today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you just oh, see yeah. that, and you, so you yeah. know. But then there's other times where again, it'd be like, man, it's a perfect day, and there's no trucks there but again once gun season rolls around i mean it, it it's like a little they're giving away i don't know tvs or something <laughs> parking lot it's crazy. Free, free tvs to all public land hunters yeah it's <laughs> honestly dan it's kind of scary man like i grew up hunting private land with my dad so like during gun season i kind of had it made right it would my it would i would sit up i would see a ton of deer my dad and maybe his buddy would go walk around and I would ha always have a shot opportunity. Like I, there was a, I couldn't remember to growing up, not shooting a deer, uh, for the longest time. And so that was like very nice, you know, lucky, very fortunate, had that opportunity, a good deer herd. And then my first year hunting, uh, was it would it would have been like 18 with the rifle on public where I live now. So not that long ago, actually. And I just remember just being freaked out. I just, I, at this point I already killed a buck. And so I was just kind of pushing for people. I think it was the second week. So I could shoot a doe at that time because you had that first week uh, that you could not only, it was a buck only, which was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But then, and then, uh, so it was that second week. And I remember walking and just being like, okay, there's an orange. Oh, holy mm -hmm. cow. That guy could technically shoot that guy. If he really, you know what I mean? It was just so, yeah. it was so strange and it kind of really, I, I honestly, it really turned me off a little bit, uh, as, as far as wanting to get out there and as far, as far as gun season goes. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this, that kind of overlaps into a deer drive topic. Mm -hmm. Uh, as far as a, a, a law here in Iowa, you can, you can go do deer drive. So a group of people, they push the timber that, you know, the guys who post are on the other side, the deer flood by them and they shoot them. Right. Kind of funneling deer down into an area. That's the, the whole thing. I can see the tradition in that. Yep. Right. And, and I'm OK with that. And I don't want to uh, restrict anybody's like restrict any type of hunting from someone, if, especially if it's they're currently doing it. But I've also been sitting on public land with my wife with a shotgun during uh, the shotgun and have had multiple deer drives come to each other. Yeah. Right. And so now we have this chaos moment where there's guns going off by two groups of people, they don't know what the other group is doing. And so I would really ask the question, is it safe to have deer drives on public land? Right. That's yeah. just all I'm saying. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Is it safe? Especially, especially when there's, I just feel like it's getting harder to get access to ground. So everybody goes to public because they want to continue to hunt but nobody communicates with each other so big group here big group here meet in the middle someone someone has the potential to get hurt really bad yeah I'm if, with if you not die one. i'm so, with you on that one yeah and like like i said i don't want to i don't really want to sit here and say hey we need to we need to cancel this type of hunting but the the question i have is is it safe that's all i'm saying that's yeah all i'm saying all i'm saying well we did a really great job here on this no foreplay uh, series. 
I guess that this would be the inaugural. That's the big <laughs> word. That's my big word for today. The inaugural uh, no foreplay series. Jeremy, man, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to do this. And as this series continues, Jeremy is going to be hopping in uh, almost every week for a while, yep. uh, give or take his uh, his new kid <laughs> scenario. But, uh, but uh, man, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to do this. And if you haven't had the opportunity to go listen to the Antler Up podcast, please go do that. That's a really good podcast, man. Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it and everything and uh, appreciate it.